In this video, let us retrace the historical path from Galileo's relativity to Einstein's. We shall very briefly mention the significant events that helped us understand the logical steps that led from Galilean relativity to Einstein's special theory of relativity. Common features present in the postulates of both these versions of relativity will be identified and of course where they differ will also be discussed. How this difference changes the status of time from an absolute or observer independent concept to a relative or observer dependent concept will be the focus of this video. Let us start by reminding ourselves what the postulates of Galilean relativity are. It says that the laws of physics are the same in all reference frames, moving with uniform velocity with respect to one another, that is, all inertial frames. Now, to be honest, Galileo was mainly studying inertia, motion of falling bodies or objects sliding on an inclined plane experimentally, and thus he actually meant laws of motion, not laws of all physics. During the late 1600s, Newton laid down the methods of calculus, and between 1679 to 87, he worked out the elaborate theoretical framework of mechanics and gravitation which had enormous success in explaining the observations of planetary motion made by Galileo, Kepler and others. In all these, the principles of Galilean relativity seem to work pretty well, so people tend to believe that it would work in all areas of physics. Now there was another postulate, or you may say a hidden assumption in Galilean relativity, one so obvious that it was not spelled out as a postulate. This is the assumption of absolute time. Its original conceptualization actually dates back to the time of Aristotle around 2000 years before Galileo. We discussed this concept of absolute time and Galilean relativity and what they mean in mathematical terms in details in a previous video. I'll put the link in the description so go check it out if you have not already and when you come back we will still be here. Anyway, so in that video you will notice that this absoluteness or universality of time plays a crucial role to determine how the velocities of an object measured by observers in two different inertial frames are related to each other. This hidden assumption is so obvious, so compelling, so intuitive in our day-to-day -day experience that it is intertwined with our very thought process and to this day is the biggest hurdle for any student taking a shot at understanding the special theory of relativity. As we will discuss, this assumption is not true in general and the first hint to this came from the study of electromagnetism and light. Throughout the 16th century, people like Galileo, Newton, Kepler and others were also working on the basics of optics observationally, but the full-blown theory of electromagnetism and its connection with light would not be discovered till late 1800s by the likes of Maxwell and Hertz. When these new breakthroughs came, people started to study electromagnetism in connection with different reference frames and observers, and then finally, discrepancies with the postulates of Galilean relativity started to pile up, and that eventually led to the discovery of special relativity by Einstein. There is a lot of interesting history here, but let us leave that for some other video and jump straight into the postulates of special relativity. So Einstein constructed his special theory of relativity also based on two postulates. The first one apparently had the same content as that of Galilean relativity, namely the laws of physics are same in all inertial frames. Though here laws of physics actually means all laws of physics, not just laws of motion. This difference with the Galilean relativity is mainly due to the second postulate of special relativity as we will see. This second one came as a consequence of the null results of the famous michelson mole type of experiments. Now a detailed explanation of this experimental setup and its working principle may take a while and throw us off our main goal here, so let us not get into that. But the bottom line is that it was attempting to detect variation in the speed of light due to its supposed propagation through the ether wind along different directions. But that variation in light speed never showed up, clearly indicating that the vectorial addition of velocities dictated by Galilean relativity was not working in this scenario. People tried to come up with all sorts of contrived explanations for this counterintuitive experimental outcome, but none really worked and finally, Einstein had the guts to deal with the problem squarely. He simply posed this experimental result as a postulate of his theory that the speed of light in empty space measured by all inertial observers is the same. It doesn't even matter if the light emitting source is moving, the measured speed of light would still be the same. It almost sounds funny today that once Einstein posed these postulates in 1905, people desperately tried for the next 25 years to avoid this, this second one. They kept trying with different versions of Michelson model experiment, each with increasing accuracy and sophistication but they merely strengthened the evidence against the Etherwind theory and only provided Einstein's theory a firmer foundation. But why this reluctance to accept something that was looking them in the eye, we should ask? Because it impacted a 2000 year old concept of absolute or universal nature of time that was prevalent from the time of Greek philosophers like Aristotle. How is that? We will demonstrate that next. 
So we will have a little thought experiment here. Consider a cart of length 2L with a machine at the center O throwing two tennis balls simultaneously at speed V0 and minus V0 towards the two walls A and B on the opposite sides where two receivers are there to catch them. The receipt of the balls at A and B are the two events we are interested in. Let us call them event A and event B. These two events are being observed by two sets of observers, one group standing on the ground, let's call them SG, and the other on board the cart, let's call them SC. Now consider two scenarios. First one is when the cart is stationary with respect to the ground, so that both sets of observers SG and SC have no relative motion with respect to each other and thus they are actually in the same inertial frame. Since the two balls are thrown simultaneously with same speed v0 but at opposite directions and both has to move equal distance L to reach the walls A and B, the receipt of the two balls that is event A and B appear to be simultaneous to both sets of observers. Alright, that was simple enough. So now consider the second scenario. The cart is moving at a speed v cart now. Let us say towards the right side and with respect to the ground. So this time, the group of observers SC on board the cart are of course moving with respect to the ground observer SC and thus they are in a different inertial frame. Question is, will the observation of the events A and B made by the two groups differ this time? Let us analyze. For those on board the cart, the situation has not changed at all. They can't feel the uniformly moving cart. For all they know, they are still sitting in the cart looking at the machine set up at the center thrown. Uh, throwing two balls at speed v0 to the two opposite walls A and B. They will of course observe that events A and B are simultaneous. For ground based observers, the situation is a little more dramatic. They see the cart moving with speed v cart to the right and the balls are being thrown one in the direction of the cart's motion and the other against it. This is basic mechanics, so Galilean velocity addition theorem applies and thus the ball moving to the wall B will appear to have speed v0 plus v cart to the right with respect to the SG observers that is ground observers. Similarly, the ball moving to the wall A will have the speed v0 minus v cart to the left with respect to the ground observers. So the balls have different speeds with respect to the ground, but according to these ground based observers, the distance to be covered by the two balls are also different. Though the ball to the right has a higher speed v0 plus v cart, it has to reach the wall B which is moving away with speed v cart. Conversely, the ball to the left has a lower speed but only have to reach the wall A which is coming towards it with a speed v cart. To the ground based observers, the situation looks something like this. I'll leave it to you to convince yourself that the ground observers also see the events A and B to be simultaneous. Just calculate the time of flight for both the balls with respect to SG observers and see for yourself. So it looks like Galilean relativity works fine with tennis balls and moving cars and events simultaneous in one inertial frame look simultaneous to any other inertial frame as well. But we are not done yet. Let's repeat the whole experiment with photons instead of tennis balls and see how things pan out. This time let's make the situation more cinematic. Imagine that instead of the machine throwing tennis balls, we have Captain Marvel at the center of the cart and shooting her photon blasters simultaneously at two aliens standing at the walls A and B. Events of interest here are alien A and alien B getting hit by the photon blasts and dying. We still have two sets of observers, SG on the ground and SC on board the cart. The two scenarios we consider are again the same, first a stationary cart and then a uniformly moving cart. We have the same questions as before as well. If the two aliens die simultaneously or not according to the observations made by the two sets of observers in each scenario. Let's find out. But remember that this time we have not regular tennis balls but photon blasts instead. So they do not act as per the rules of Galilean relativity, they rather obey the postulates of Einstein's special relativity as people found out by those Michelson Mole type of experiments we mentioned before. So we have to think through our thought experiment accordingly. So the first scenario is trivial. Cart is stationary with respect to the ground, so SG and SC observers are in the same inertial frame, so their observations must agree. Since the two photon blasts are shot simultaneously and move with speed C, and the aliens are at equal distance L from the center, they die together, that is simultaneously as witnessed by both SC and SG observers. Now consider the second scenario. The cart is moving at speed V cart, this time again to the right. This time the two observers group are in different inertial frames. So let's see if the observations made by the two groups differ this time. For observers on board the cart, the situation is still the same as scenario 1. 
they are sitting in the cart looking at the captain shooting her blasters they will of course see the two aliens die simultaneously now the group on ground see the cart move with speed v cart to the right and photons being photons not do not have any concern for the car's motion and their speed appears to be c in both directions even with respect to the ground observers but due to the car's motion the observers on ground see the alien on the right that is at wall b as a target moving away from the photon blast and the one to the left that is at wall a moving towards it naturally the alien to the right gets to live a little longer as the blast takes a little longer to reach it here is how the situation appears to the ground based observers Thus you see, in the moving cart scenario, the ground observer sees a different reality. They see the alien die not simultaneously but one after the other. Though it is quite surprising and goes totally against our intuition, but nevertheless it is the only logical outcome if we believe that second postulate of special relativity works. And it does work as has been verified by numerous experiments, actual ones, not just the thought experiment we have discussed here. So hopefully now I have convinced you that simultaneity is a relative concept that may change from one inertial frame to the other. This counterintuitive fact is a consequence of Einstein's postulates of special relativity, especially the second one, which is a direct fallout of Michelson Morley type of experiments. Okay, but how does this hamper our belief that time is absolute, that is, it runs the same for observers in different inertial frames? It turns out that the relative nature of simultaneity also makes time a relative concept because the observer's clock reading, that is, simultaneous with the occurrence of an event, is assigned as the timestamp of that event. Thus you see that assigning time to an event completely depends on the concept of simultaneity and hence time of an event can differ for observers in different inertial frames and we must let go of this idea of an absolute time for all inertial observers. So in this video, we have learned how the second postulate of special relativity makes simultaneity a relative concept which in turn changes the notion of time to a frame dependent one. Oh, but there is one more thing, just one last point to make. We established here that simultaneity can be relative. Fine. However, this does not mean that observers in different inertial frames always must have to disagree on the simultaneity of every pair of events. There can exist pair of events that will appear to occur simultaneously to different inertial observers. In fact, in the thought experiment we just discussed here, there are such pair of events. Both observers on board the cart and on ground will agree on their simultaneity. I leave it to you to find these for yourself so you can test yourself on your grasp of what we have just discussed in this video and do let me know in the comment section what your findings are. On that note, let me finish this video right now so that you can go ahead and do it right away while the thoughts are still fresh in your mind. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.